Hi folks, Marina Stroud here. I am your Tradesmith product education lead. Thanks for joining us today and for letting us be a part of your educational journey. Please take some time to review our previously recorded bootcamp webinars found within your help menu. You'll see that the bootcamp lessons are organized into beginner and intermediate lessons. The beginner lessons are hosted every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, and the intermediate lessons are hosted every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, unless otherwise directed. As I've mentioned, our boot camps are fluid and I may make some changes as we go. I will be including the webinar script as a reference for each webinar presentation. As you know, attending live will provide you with a more interactive one-on-one -on -one platform where your questions are answered on the spot. The webinar Q&A will also be included at the conclusion of each presentation. And this will be helpful because if you have a question, another member may have the same question. Once I've completed the bootcamp series, we'll host the beginner and intermediate series again, and the webinars will be updated based on any new site releases. The webinar registration links are gonna be found within your bootcamp folders. I'll show you where to find the registration links when we get to the website. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at today's topics. Today, we're going to review the basics of how cryptocurrency works. Now, I'm not a cryptocurrency expert, but I would like to share with you some information I have learned about cryptocurrencies. I wanna start by providing a glimpse into how cryptocurrency evolved. Before money existed, people used other systems to, to perform exchanges. I think it's important to understand how cryptocurrency evolved as humans moved away from bartering for goods and services to now purchasing goods and services virtually. In today's discussion, I'd like to address the following questions and discussion points. We'll take a look at the evolution of money and cryptocurrencies. We'll answer what is a cryptocurrency and take a look at the pros and cons of cryptocurrency as a digital investment. We'll also discuss where cryptocurrencies are stored and how they're traded. We'll check out the top cryptocurrencies by market capitalization. And for those of you folks who just don't want to invest in cryptocurrencies, we'll look at some alternatives to crypto investing. We'll end our discussion with a brief overview of the Tradesmith cryptocurrency products available to help you track and manage your cryptocurrency portfolios and find new potential cryptocurrency investment opportunities. Our education team put together a supplemental guide on getting started with cryptocurrency investing. I've included a link within today's presentation. I also included additional cryptocurrency related resources they, that may also be helpful. Now, please keep in mind that Tradesmith has no affiliation with the cryptocurrency related resources I have included for additional reading. The links are only for educational purposes. I scratched that. There is one link. I did include a link to Brave New Coin, which is our data provider for cryptocurrency. And we'll, I'll share that with you as well at the end. All right, so before we get started, I need to take a moment to share our usual disclaimer. The information we present today and in upcoming tutorials is intended for educational purposes only. We are not financial advisors and cannot provide any individualized advice or recommendations. We are recording today's presentation, so if you miss something, don't worry about it. You'll be able to go back and rewatch it at your convenience. Please try to keep your questions during the webinar pertaining to today's topic. I'll open the floor to all general questions at the end of the presentation. If there's a question that we are unable to answer at the moment, we'll follow back up with you via email. Okay, so great. Let's start with the evolution of money. Now here's a oversimplified history of money broken down into five stages. So in stage one, we've got the barter system. When society was in its early stages, there was no such thing as money. And the only way to buy something from somebody was to barter and trade. 
bartering had its limitations as both parties had to agree to sell and buy each other's commodities. And not all goods could be easily valued. And there were certain products that you couldn't divide easily. This is where currency comes in. From gold and silver, currency emerged. Coins were made out of precious metals like gold and silver, and everyone accepted that they were worth something. So it didn't matter if you didn't want a goat in exchange for a basket of your finest produce. You could still trade your basket of produce with the exchange of coins. Then we come to the banking system. As banks were established and governments had control, we realized that as long as there was trust in the system, we could move away from carrying blocks of gold or gold and silver coins to something much more convenient. And paper money was born. It has facilitated trade and commerce, but because it's not made out of precious metals, it doesn't have an intrinsic value. It has value because the government says it has value. Paper money is really a receipt that proves you own a certain amount of money. But as technologies have improved, we have found even more convenient ways to store and trade money. That takes us to stage four. More and more people than ever are buying things online, right? We're using credit cards now. I seldom ever carry my money in my wallet these days, you know, so I typically just use my bank's check card to make purchases. At this stage, we don't really see our money anymore. It's not about coins or notes or even goats. It's just entries on a spreadsheet. If you buy something for Amazon from Amazon, all that's happening is that your bank adds a debit entry for the purchase and Amazon Amazon's bank adds a credit entry for that amount. You can even use your smartphone to pay for goods and services and send money to friends or family members. Retailers are increasingly accepting services like Apple Pay and Google Pay for point of sale payments. Now this brings us to stage five, virtual currency. Bitcoin was developed in 2009 as a way for people to send money over the internet. Satoshi Nakamoto is the fictitious name used by the person who developed Bitcoin, which became the standard for virtual currencies. Most cryptocurrencies you see today are variations on Bitcoin. Cryptocurrency is 100% virtual. With cryptos, there is no gold, no silver, and no paper. It is not a tangible asset that you can hold. It's really just a transfer of digital assets, but the concept is the same. So think of running a spreadsheet of who has paid what to whom, but instead of multiple banks keeping their own separate records, there's just one enormous spreadsheet. This enormous spreadsheet captures every transaction ever made using that cryptocurrency. There's a growing number of companies like Microsoft, Starbucks, Overstock, Amazon, Visa, PayPal, and Coca-Cola that have embraced cryptocurrencies, allowing customers to use them as an official method of payment for their goods and services. Now, while buying and selling cryptocurrency is becoming more and more popular, the opportunities to spend virtual currencies is still somewhat limited due to their volatility. Now let's go into more detail about what cryptocurrency is. Cryptocurrencies are digital assets that can be traded and exchanged for goods and services on a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. What does this mean? Ooh. Well, it means that people can send money directly to one another without a bank or third party as an intermediary. Bitcoin was created so people don't have to rely on government or financial institutions to make financial transactions. 
Cryptocurrencies exist in virtual wallets and individual coin ownership is stored on blockchains or digital ledgers that manage and record all transactions. So let me give you an analogy. Imagine it's Saturday night and we're playing a game of poker, right? With our closest friends, but none of you have poker chips and you left your cash at home. Well, you each pull out your notebook and you write down who bets what and who wins and loses. You don't completely trust the other players. Come on, we're talking about money here, folks. <laughs> so everyone keeps their ledgers separately. At the end of every hand, you'll compare what you've written down. That way, if someone makes a mistake or tries to cheat, that discrepancy is caught right away. Eventually, you'll fill up a page with transactions. Think of this as a block of transactions. Eventually, your notebook will have pages and pages of information. It becomes a chain of blocks, hence the name blockchain. The blockchain is a secured ledger, and it uses cryptography to secure the transaction, so it makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spend. The reason why cryptos are called cryptocurrencies is because they are secured by cryptography. Again, the blockchain is a decentralized open source ledger that anyone can access. This means that while every transaction of a cryptocurrency is recorded on the same open source ledger, there are many, many, many copies of that ledger. Remember, everyone at the poker table has their own separate ledger. Anyone who is part of the network has a copy. This peer-to-peer -peer network is what makes the decentralized nature of cryptocurrency work. You may have also heard of cryptocurrency mining or Bitcoin mining. The ledger or blockchain is run by miners who use powerful computers to verify every transaction. And in return for dedicating their computer to mining, they earn some Bitcoin as compensation. If you're curious about cryptocurrency investing, you may want to weigh the pros and cons and decide if cryptocurrency markets, if they're right for you. Let's take a look at a few pros and cons together. As you know, cryptocurrency is complicated, and most people who own cryptocurrency, myself included, don't fully understand how the underlying principles work. But that doesn't mean that we cannot participate in this market. Consumers can use cryptocurrency to buy things, and investors can make money by holding cryptocurrency as its value appreciates without having to explain the concept of the blockchain or the mechanics of cryptocurrency keys. All right, so let's take a look at some pros to crypto investing. Cryptocurrency networks are inherently secure. Other than scams that fool individual investors into parting with their coins, Bitcoin was designed to be an absolutely secure system. Most cryptos continue Bitcoin's best practices. The decentralized register and blockchain technology mean that if someone attempts to hack a cryptocurrency to modify a record or falsify transactions, they would have to hack the majority of computers involved in the cryptocurrency. This wouldn't be realistic, and I don't know of a single successful attack on the Bitcoin network. Also, the act of mining acts as a built-in quality control for cryptocurrencies because they're paid for their efforts. It's in the best interest for these miners to keep accurate and up-to-date transactions that secure the integrity of the system. Price fluctuations can create huge profits. This next pro may also be a, a con, depending on how you look at it. With volatility comes the great potential for profit and also risk. 
The price of cryptocurrencies can fluctuate greatly from just a mention of a specific coin on a social media site. And the last pro is cryptocurrency may be a potential hedge against inflation. In theory, cryptocurrencies should not be subject to rising inflation rates as they have finite supply built into their code. For example, the maximum total supply of Bitcoin is capped at 21 million. According to Investopedia, as of January 2022, 18.9 million Bitcoins have already been mined, with 2.1 million Bitcoins still to be released. Without the ability to issue more coins, economic theory suggests over time, the value of anything finite should keep up with the rates of inflation. This is a theory, but as you know, the cash in your savings accounts will often effectively lose value over time because rising costs means that the dollars that you save today will buy less in the future. In a related topic, Inside Tradesmith editor Justin Brill recently wrote an article titled, These Assets Are Defying the Market's Trend, in which he discussed, along with other markets, but he also discussed Bitcoin and its recent unusual performance. He noted that Bitcoin has been acting more like a safe haven and has continued to rise alongside gold and bonds as stocks pulled back last week. But it's worth noting that this recent shift does coincide with the widespread reports of Ukrainian and Russian citizens using Bitcoin to protect the value of their savings in today's war. If you want to read more about Justin Brill's thoughts on this, I've included a link in today's presentation. Now let's check out some cons. Cryptocurrencies are volatile. Because cryptocurrencies are not controlled by central banks, their value is whatever the buyers on the open market will pay. This also means that there's nothing tethering any cryptocurrency's value to reality, and any coin could theoretically become worthless in an instant if demand for it goes away. If you decide to invest in cryptocurrencies, diversification is key. You probably don't want to put everything into a single coin or try to win big on an initial coin offering or ICO. You can, you can make a lot of money potentially, but you could also lose your shirt. So you definitely want to be careful. Cryptocurrency scams. We talked a little bit about that earlier. If you've incorporated cryptocurrency into your investment portfolio, watch out for some common scams. According to a January 2022 Federal Trade Commission report, almost 7,000 people lost upwards of 80 million in cryptocurrency scams from October 2020 through March 2021. If a seemingly credible person or establishment claims that they can only accept Bitcoin as payment, it's likely a scam, folks. Although the blockchain is public and creates permanent open access records, people can transact on blockchain more and more anonymously, making it easy to trick you, take your money and run. Has anyone heard of the Squid Game scam? Sophisticated scammers can create new games and imaginary worlds on the blockchain. This scam is based on that Netflix series, Squid Games. And you may not uh, want to watch this with kids. <laughs> it's a little bit gory. But the Squid cryptocurrency token and this immersive online game was a scam. Developers disappeared after the cryptocurrency skyrocketed in price and seemingly cashed out with more than $3 million. It may be prudent to keep cryptocurrency holdings to under 5%, according to most financial experts, and never invest in cryptocurrency at the expense of saving for emergencies or to pay off high interest debt. 
To learn more about common cryptocurrency scams, I've included a website link in today's presentation. Moving on to the next con, cryptocurrency is less liquid than fiat currency or the stock market. Institutional investors in more established markets create price walls by putting a lot of orders into the system at prices surrounding the current range of trading prices. This means that a single big order tends to move the price less. In the cryptocurrency markets, this price wall hasn't been established yet. So a single large investor selling their cryptocurrency can cause a major swing in the market prices. This is gonna raise volatility. And the last con that I wanted to briefly discuss is that there is no recourse for digital asset recovery. There may be some coins that are attempting to address this issue, but at this point, I can safely say that there really isn't much of a recourse. So you need to be very careful. Investors have lost thousands of dollars of real money locked in computers because they didn't know how to recover them. So maybe they forgot their passwords or they were scammed. Cryptocurrency users cannot count on being able to recover lost or stolen coins. If you want to read more about the pros and cons of cryptocurrencies, I've also included an additional link there that you can review. So let's move on to the next topic. Where are cryptocurrencies stored? Just like cash, credit cards, and check cards are carried in our wallets, cryptocurrencies are stored in digital wallets. The cryptocurrency wallets really work as a gateway, providing the tools you need to communicate with the blockchain. Each digital wallet contains encrypted information called public and private keys. And that's what's used to send and receive the digital cryptocurrency. The currencies stored in your wallet are protected by your private key. Here's another analogy. Think about your mailbox where you receive your physical mail. It has a unique and specific number, your address. If someone wants to deliver you a letter or a package, they must know your address to deliver it. And as the receiver of the mail, you have a private key to unlock the mailbox and collect your belongings. Just like with your home address, anyone in the cryptocurrency world can know your public address to send you Bitcoins. And to unlock, spend or send those Bitcoins, you would require your private address or key for which you need to take full responsibility, just like you would with the keys to your physical mailbox. It is important to note that your private key is strictly your responsibility. Unlike the bank that can help you gain access to your account again if you've lost your password, you would forfeit any cryptocurrencies you own if you lost your private key. It cannot be retrieved once it's been lost or stolen. Now these digital keys are not stored on the Bitcoin network but are created and stored by the digital wallets. And there's a lot of different types of wallets out there, and some allow the private key to be stored and guarded by the users. Most of the web and mobile wallet software services in the Bitcoin market store your private key on your behalf on their servers. They would be stored in an encrypted form that only you can decrypt. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail about the public and private keys. However, you may want to do some research on your own. There are two main types of wallets that I would like to discuss, and that is software and hardware wallets. Software wallets are also known as hot wallets. These are any wallets that can be connected to the internet. Software wallets provide an easy to use application and funds are quickly accessible. There are three types of software wallets, web, desktop, and mobile wallets. 
Web and online wallets don't need to be downloaded and can be accessed through your internet browser. Desktop wallets do entail downloading the software and are generally safer than the web and online wallets. The mobile wallets work like desktop wallets, but are designed as mobile apps. So these are the ones that you use on your smartphone or tablet. Hardware wallets are also known as cold wallets, and they're gonna be a safer alternative for storing your cryptocurrencies as they have no connection to the internet. Instead, they use a physical device to store your crypto. Hardware wallets are gonna be ideal for long-term investors as the funds tend to be less accessible. Now, keep in mind though, you need to be a little bit more tech savvy to use the hardware wallets. Okay, so where are cryptocurrencies traded? In this next slide, I have included a very simplified cryptocurrency trading process. Cryptocurrencies are traded on a cryptocurrency exchange. There are several different cryptocurrency exchanges. So you wanna do your research on each exchange prior to moving any funds or coins. I'll show you a couple of websites that you can review to help you research any particular exchange. Although some exchanges let you store your cryptocurrency on their site, you would typically start by setting up a digital wallet account. As you just learned, there are software and hardware wallets. For those of you that are just starting out in the cryptocurrency markets, the software wallets are gonna be the most user-friendly. If you're more tech savvy and concerned about security, you can go the hardware route. In step two, you would transfer your US dollars or other fiat currency into your wallet. And some, some wallets will allow you to link to a major credit card. While some cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, are available for purchase in US dollars, there's other cryptocurrencies that require you to pay with Bitcoins or other cryptocurrencies. In step three, you would create an account at the exchange, and then you would transfer money, bitcoins or other cryptocurrency to buy the cryptocurrencies on the exchange. Again, there's numerous software wallets, so please take some time to review or research each wallet and determine which best meets your needs. I've listed some of the more popular software and hardware wallets and exchanges. Website wallets like Coinbase and Gemini also act as uh, a wallet and an exchange. So they allow you to buy, sell, and store your cryptocurrencies. They allow you to connect a US bank account and easily transfer dollars in or out of your account. I would say that Coinbase and Gemini may be a good platform for beginners. These are the two most popular cryptocurrency wallet slash exchanges in the United States. Both platforms have similar cryptocurrency offerings. Um, they're, I believe, available in over 50 countries and claim a security first approach to trading. One difference that I wanna make sure you consider is their customer service. While Coinbase offers email and chat support, it does not provide live phone support. On the other hand, Gemini does offer 24 seven phone and chat support for customers. So if you're new to cryptos, this, this support availability may give you a little bit more peace of mind. I've included some uh, additional links where you can do a side-by-side -side comparison of Coinbase and Gemini and access their individual sites. Exodus is a desktop and mobile wallet with a simple user interface and a built-in exchange. You can send, receive, and exchange Bitcoin and more than 100 cryptocurrencies with Exodus. It does provide a 24-7 support, a knowledge base, and training videos. I know these training videos are very helpful especially when you're trying to get started. 
You can check out more information on Exodus's website. Mycelium is one of the oldest and best known Bitcoin mobile wallets for Android and iOS devices. It currently only supports Bitcoin, Ethereum, and ERC-20 tokens. If you're not familiar with ERC-20, it just simply refers to the scripting standard that they're using on the Ethereum blockchain. Think of ERC-20 as a set of basic guidelines and functions that any new token created in the Ethereum network must follow. Now, this mobile app works well for experienced crypto investors who, who like the features of the QR code based payments, offline storage, and control over their own private keys. The QR code is the, um, you've seen them when you go to the restaurants, right? Nowadays, you have to scan, open up your photo app and scan that QR code to pull up that menu. Well, it's used in many different applications, but the QR code based payments are a contactless payment method where the payment is performed by scanning that QR code from your mobile app. Now, again, Tradesmith has no affiliation with these wallets or exchanges, and this information is provided for educational purposes only. Let's check out the hardware wallets for our, our more savvy security conscious investors. Here are two of the most popular wallets, Ledger and Trezor. Ledger hardware wallets keep your coins safe in an offline device. So you'll see I put a little screenshot there of what that little device looks like. Looks like a little USB flash drive. And they connect to your phone or computer to store and access your digital holdings. With included Ledger live software, you can check your balance and send and receive currencies. I believe Ledger supports more than 1,800 digital coins and tokens. Trezor, very similar device, can also store your digital coins offline. They plug into your computer or smartphone. You can use a multi-factor authentication and supports more than 1,500 digital coins. There are different models available for both Ledger and Trezor with varying capabilities and price points. So you wanna be sure to do your research. I've included links to Ledger and Trezor websites so that you can review those as well. Okay, so let's check out some popular cryptocurrency exchanges. Think of the cryptocurrency exchange as the marketplace where you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies. Some cryptocurrency exchanges support advanced features like margin accounts and future trading, although these are less commonly available to US-based investors. Other features like cryptocurrency staking or cryptocurrency loans that allow you to earn interest on your cryptocurrency holdings. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about how you can earn interest and boost yield with Bitcoin and crypto, I've included a link in today's presentation. Kraken is one of the original trading platforms and it offers over 50 cryptocurrencies to invest in. It also allows margin trading and future trading. With margin accounts, you can borrow up to five times your account balance to trade cryptocurrency assets. Binance Exchange is one of the world's most popular cryptocurrency exchanges, but it no longer supports US customers due to SEC regulations. So for US members, we go to Binance.us, and I believe it's available to most states except for Connecticut, Hawaii, Idaho, Louisiana, New York, Texas, or Vermont. Cryptocurrency has become more and more accessible to novice investors. Whether you're using Coinbase or another alternative trading platform, it's really important to understand the volatility of this market. Have you seen the new cryptocurrency commercial for Crypto.com starring Matt Damon? Maybe it's not so new anymore. It's been around for a few months now. But this commercial features Matt Damon 
taking a viewer on a historical journey of brave men and women who made a, a difference in the world. It's really a, a great commercial. <laughs> but uh, crypto.com is another cryptocurrency exchange and it supports trading, investing, staking, wallets, NFTs, and more. And it offers more than 150 different currencies and discounts for those who hold a significant stake in uh, crypto.com coin, ticker CRO. Now, if you're not familiar with NFTs, that's all the rage now with cryptocurrencies. These are non-fungible tokens and are one of the, the latest cryptocurrency crazes. It, um, they perform or they transform digital works of arts and other collectibles into assets that are easily more easy to trade on the blockchain. So if you wanna learn more about that, I've included some links. Remember Coinbase and Gemini also act as exchanges. They're wallets and exchanges in one. That's why I think that they're great for um, those of you that are just starting out because it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be so complicated, right? We don't have to go to a bunch of different exchanges uh, we can start off with, you know, Coinbase or Gemini, which act as a wallet and exchange. So I think it just makes it a little bit easier for those of us that are, are new to crypto investing. Again, neither I nor Tradesmith are recommending any particular wallet and or exchange. I'm simply providing you with some of the most popular wallets and exchanges out there. There are many cryptocurrency exchanges that I have not covered. Beyond fees, when choosing the best cryptocurrency exchange for your needs, you probably want to consider security, trading volume, educational resources. I know that's important to me. And whether an exchange lists the cryptocurrencies you're interested in buying. For example, you may want to find exchanges for a cryptocurrency of interest that has high trading volume. You'll want to verify that there's sufficient trading volume in your coins to ensure liquidity so that you can easily trade your coins and dollars. Coin Checkup is a great site to research cryptocurrencies, their charts and exchanges to trade your coins. So let me take you to Coin Checkup real quick and show you. One moment, please. Okay, I am already on the site here, Coin Checkup. Dot com. So this is a great site to do some research. For example, I can search for a particular coin. We'll go with Doge and I'll select it from the drop down menu. And you can review. There are several tabs here that you can review. You can take a look at the overview. You can go to the charts. If you go to markets, you can see where you can trade Dogecoin. So on the very far left, you'll see all of the exchanges, but I'd like to look at the trading volume. So this gives us the trading volume. So you wanna look for high liquidity here, but you can trade Dogecoin on Binance Futures, Binance, KuCoin, OKX okay, Exchange, Coinbase Pro. So there's uh, there's Kraken right there, Binance US. Some of these we've covered today. So that's a really good site. I like that site as well. Also, if we go to Brave New Coin, this is our data provider. And we're tracking approximately 13,000 cryptocurrencies from Brave New Coin. Well, if you go to bravenewcoin.com, you can go to data and charts. And for example, I can come in here and I can scroll down this list. You can see there's quite a bit of exchanges, right? So I can select my exchange of interest here. I can read a little bit of information about that particular exchange. The year of foundation, there's a URL link to access the Binance exchange. I can review its fees, support, and so forth. So there's a lot of information out there for you to kind of research 
the exchanges that you need to go to to trade a particular asset. Okay, let's take a look at the top cryptocurrencies by market capitalization. The top cryptocurrencies are typically ranked by market capitalization because it's a direct reflection of the investor appetite. The Cryptocurrencies Index, or CCI30 for short, is a rules-based index designed to objectively measure the overall growth and daily and long-term movement of the blockchain sector. It does so by tracking 30 of the largest cryptocurrencies by market cap. I've included a link in today's presentation to the CCI30 website. Now, if you're new to cryptocurrency investing, the CCI30 um, might help you find the 30 largest cryptocurrencies by market capitalization. That might be a good starting point. Now, if you are interested in cryptocurrencies but don't want to invest in them directly, there are plenty of crypto-related investment alternatives. You might be hesitant to invest in blockchain due to the association with the volatile cryptocurrency markets. However, the blockchain is not the same as cryptocurrency. Remember, the blockchain is that decentralized digital ledger that collects and records all transactions. The information is distributed and copied across the network of computers. This means that the records on the blockchain are public and verifiable, just like your buddy's poker logs. Businesses and governments around the world are continuing to test and implement blockchain technology. There are blockchain ETFs that don't put any of your money into cryptocurrency specifically, but invest only in stocks of regulated companies, many of which are blue chip companies, tech companies. So let's take a look at a few together. There's three main blockchain ETFs. The first one, Black. And this is, I believe, one of the largest blockchain ETFs by total assets. Block invests a minimum of 80% of its net assets in companies engaged in the development and utilization of blockchain technology. It follows a blended strategy, investing in a mix of value and growth stocks of various market caps across the world. The top three holdings include CME Group, Inc. This is the world's largest financial derivatives exchange. SBI Holdings, a financial services company group based in Tokyo, Japan. And NVIDIA Corporation, a tech company that designs graphics, processing units for gaming and professional markets. If you wanna learn more about Block, I've included the website link there. Ticker BLCN, Siren NASDAQ Next Gen Economy ETF. It tracks the NASDAQ Blockchain Economy Index, which gauges the performance of companies involved in developing, researching, supporting, or utilizing blockchain technology. It also follows a blended strategy, investing in growth and value stocks. And some of the top uh, holdings include IBM, a tech and hardware services company, GMO Internet Inc., a Tokyo-based uh, company, internet company that develops online advertising and media. We also have Baidu, a China-based internet services and artificial intelligence company. Last but certainly not least, we've got Ledger. This tracks the blockchain index, which gauges the performance of companies that utilize or invest in products that benefit from blockchain technology. So a few of the top holdings include Cognizant Technology Solutions, an information technology and consulting company, Micron Technology, an American producer of computer memory and computer data storage, and Industrial and Commercial Bank of China Limited, a commercial banking and financial services company. You can access the website links to all three blockchain ETFs in today's presentation.
So please take some time to research these blockchain ETFs as an alternative to investing in cryptocurrencies. Alrighty, folks, now that you have a basic understanding of what a cryptocurrency is and how it works, let's briefly review the Tradesmith products that can help cryptocurrency investors track and manage their cryptocurrency investments and assess the health of the cryptocurrency markets. Let's start with Crypto by Tradesmith. Crypto by Tradesmith is our cryptocurrency tracking and alerting software program. This program provides investors with portfolio management, risk management, and research tools. With Crypto by Tradesmith, you can create your cryptocurrency portfolios and track your cryptos with our proprietary risk and health indicators. The volatility quotient or risk can help crypto investors determine the normal risk of each cryptocurrency. This helps you with a more customized exit strategy. We also have our health indicator or our green, yellow, red light system. So you can see if a cryptocurrency is in a healthy, neutral, or unhealthy state. Currently, we are unable to import most of your crypto wallets and or exchanges. Our development team is continually working on this. However, we do support two mobile brokers and that's Robinhood and eToro. I've included some additional information on Robinhood and eToro if you are interested in learning more. Now, Crypto by Tradesmith also provides you with the tools to help you position size and even build a new cryptocurrency investment portfolio with the help of our PureQuant tool. Let's go ahead and check out Crypto Ideas by Tradesmith. Crypto Ideas by Tradesmith is our cryptocurrency market analysis software program that provides the tools necessary to research the health of the cryptocurrency markets. We also have various cryptocurrency investment strategies that you can follow as well. In order to research or create a portfolio of cryptocurrencies, you need Crypto by Tradesmith. In order to research the cryptocurrency markets and review our crypto investment strategies, you need Crypto Ideas by Tradesmith. And all of these products, as you know, can be accessed from your Tradesmith Finance account. I just want to note that Crypto by Tradesmith and Crypto Ideas are sold separately, as most of our products are. If you'd like to learn more about how you can add a cryptocurrency uh, product to your investment tool belt, I'll include the contact number uh, for our plan specialist. You tell them that Marina sent you and they'll take care of you. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up today's lesson. Today, I provided a basic overview of what cryptocurrencies are and how they've evolved into today's digital currency. We learned that stocks and cryptocurrencies are two assets with very different characteristics. Aside from the obvious, the cryptocurrency markets are much more volatile than the stock market. With cryptocurrency, you can see dramatic swings in prices. In order to invest in cryptocurrency, you must first set up a digital wallet. And there are several different types of wallets. We have software wallets and hardware wallets. Savvier crypto investors can look into the hardware route for a more secure wallet. Cryptocurrencies have value based on user trust. If enough investors find value in cryptos, they will be a more valuable investment vehicle. Think about supply and demand. If there's a need, there is demand. This is why scarcity is a big advantage of cryptocurrency investing. Bitcoin has a limited supply, whereas our fiat currency does not. I cannot say this enough. Please do your research before diving into this volatile market. Tradesmith is here to help you better track and manage your cryptocurrency investments so that you don't feel so overwhelmed navigating these speculative waters. Alrighty, folks, thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, please contact our dedicated customer success team. This Thursday, March 10, 2022, we will discuss the PureQuant and Risk Rebalancer tools 
I'll cover the differences between each tool and how to use them. You will receive a step-by-step -step process on creating a new investment portfolio and rebalancing your existing portfolio based on equal risk parity. This lesson applies to members that hold a Trade Stops, Trade 360, Crypto by Tradesmith, and Tradesmith Platinum accounts. Please feel free to register even if you can't make it. We'll send you the webinar recording if you register to attend. And all are welcome to attend even if you don't have access to the Pure Quant or Risk Rebalancer tool. Thanks again for joining us and for letting us be a part of your educational journey. Until next time. Bye. All righty, folks. We are back with you. So while, let me go ahead and pull up my little webcam here. There's Kristen. While Kristen is reviewing some, some questions, I do want to jump onto the website the Tradesmith Finance website, and just briefly show you, if you do want to attend this Thursday's lesson, um, you'll see I'm already logged into my Tradesmith Finance account. On the upper right, you'll see a green help menu. You can click that. This is where you can access your additional educational resources, but here's the bootcamp lesson. So we have, uh, it's an intermediate lesson coming up this Thursday. I can click on the folder to expand it. And here's the webinar sign up right at the top of the list. So I'm going to click that and it takes you to the registration page. So we'll be discussing the pure quant tool versus the risk rebalancer. I really want you to understand the differences. This is such a commonly asked question. What's the difference between the pure quant tool and the risk rebalancer tool? So we really got to get that down. So to register, type in your first name, last name, email address, and you'll hit the register button. Okay, so going back to, uh, uh, for those of you that do not have Crypto by Tradesmith or Crypto Ideas, you can track your portfolios in the same way. So under my portfolios, I created a watch list of the CCI 30 cryptocurrencies. Again, these are the cryptocurrencies, the top 30 cryptocurrency based on market capitalization. So you can track your crypto assets as you would your equities using the same indicators that we have, our risk indicator, which is the VQ column and the health. As you can see, uh, what is this? Every one of these 30 cryptocurrencies is in the red zone, mm -hmm. <laughs> except for one. Um, and, you know, if you take a look at the crypto markets, uh, you definitely want to be careful at the moment. Crypto, although maybe you might be saying now is the time to buy because it's uh, pretty much at the bottom here. So um, this is how we're looking at our health, our crypto market health. We're looking at all the cryptocurrencies that we're tracking, which, again, is approximately 13,000. All of the cryptocurrencies that we track come from um, our data provider, Brave New Coin. And so this graph that you see to the left is a representation of looking at all of the cryptocurrencies. So we only have uh, 2%, approximately 2% that have qualified. We want to see this threshold at least 20%. And uh, clearly we're not, uh, we're not there. Of all the cryptocurrencies, we can see uh, about 72% are in the red zone. If you look at the cryptocurrencies that are traded on the Binance exchange, approximately 97% are in the red zone. And of the CCI 30, over uh, approximately 97% are in the red zone. So that's just a quick overview of some of the features. We do have various tools as well. You can position size your cryptos. You can build a new crypto portfolio. And I just want to point this out just real quick, uh, Kristen, before we take questions. But I can go to my pure quant tool and I can build a pure quant. I'm not sure what we're going to get with so many in the red zone. But in step one, 
we can choose our sources and under the Tradesmith baskets, I can pull from all of the cryptocurrencies. There's 13,000 cryptocurrencies. Then um, in step two, it tells you what the tool is looking for. So it's looking for cryptos that are in the green zone. They're not going to have an average VQ over 80%. They'll be at a positive gain since they triggered the green light or the health indicator entry signal. And in step three, you tell the tool how much you want to invest. And I'll just keep it to 10,000. We'll see if we can get 15 positions. I don't know. But then we can hit this build. And it's, it's really going to look for the cryptocurrencies that are in a healthy state, that are at a positive gain since they triggered an entry signal. And so it'll also position size it for you based on equal risk parity. So this is a pretty neat tool. Let's see what we get. Let's go down here. Oh, I got 13 results. Okay, so you can kind of review this information. You can save it, you can print it, export it. I love this tool. This is one of my favorite tools. <laughs> yeah, mine too, yeah. <laughs> Same. All right, shall we take some questions? Yes, sounds good. So someone asked, are they able to look at their crypto newsletter, specifically with Palm Beach Crypto Income Newsletter? And of course we can, most definitely. So can we show them, Marina, where to access them under my gurus? I know we won't be able to open the Palm Beach box where it's located um, to show right. the newsletters, but we can at least show them. Yes, absolutely. So this is a great question. I just, and it ties in nicely here. We've had some updates, so I don't know if you've noticed, folks, but we updated our newsletter center. So uh, let's explain here what we're looking at. So here on the upper left, you'll see just some of the most recent Tradesmith editorials. Uh, recent Tradesmith recommendations based on your subscription. So this one is Tradesmith Decoder, but you can come in here. Uh, you'll see these little arrows, these little left and right bubble arrows you have your newsletter recent recommendations so you can see which ones are most recently been added let me see what else there is okay that's that and as we scroll down your publishers will be listed below based on your active subscriptions so um you know you may have um quite a few where's palm beach did i skip it there's palm beach so here's Palm Beach. You would scroll down to your Palm Beach. Here are the various uh, newsletters for Palm Beach, uh, or you can click on Palm Beach Research and it takes you to the similar page that you're used to. So let me show you with, can I show with the Billionaires Club? Um, how do I access the Billionaires Club now? Let me go back here. I think it's still separate. Yeah, they still have yes. that separate. So when you go, um, when you click on the name of the publisher, it takes you to this page, right? Where you can then go down and select the different newsletters for that publisher. Great question. So yes, you yeah. can come in here and um, review the different uh, crypto related newsletters as well, and even add them as portfolios. Perfect, yeah. And we actually had some a similar question with the tool. So if they have access to the screener, are they able to access and screen cryptocurrencies on the screener? If so, um, how? And yes, most definitely you can. So Marina, if you could show them a screener. Yeah. Of course, you have to have access to it, but. Right, yeah, the um, the screener tool can be accessed through your invest site page and we'll go to screener. Now to have, I believe you have to have ideas by Tradesmith, crypto ideas by Tradesmith, Trade360 or Platinum to have access to this tool. I don't know if I missed anyone, I apologize if I do, but. You can create a new screener here by clicking new screener. And there's many different filters that you can choose from. 
So I can open up Manage Filters, and you may pick and choose the filters that will benefit your crypto screen. So perhaps I want to look at the health, maybe trend. You can also look at entry signals, VQ. I'll show you how these work in just a moment. Ratings only pertains to long equities. We have our Tradesmith baskets. That's how we're going to select all of our cryptocurrencies. You can also tie in our strategies. We'll keep that open as well. Here's the newsletter recommendations. If you want to specifically isolate to your newsletter recommendations, you can. And I believe that are the main ones that I want to look at for crypto. So you can play around with those filters. I'll hit save and close. And then we just need to set our parameters. So maybe I want cryptos that are in the green zone that are trending up. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure if we're going to get any folks. But you can also search based on those that have most recently triggered the health indicator green zone and also the early entry signal. So I'll show you both ways. So let's try this. Let's do entry signal. That's the green zone. Let's see if any have triggered within the last 30 calendar days. You can specify based on VQ range. You can do a more than, a between, or a less than. Tradesmith strategies, here's all of our crypto ideas labs. There's various different uh, strategies that you can follow. If you want to learn more about the crypto strategies, you can go to your help menu, go down to intermediate lessons, and pull up the crypto labs. There's a webinar and the webinar script. And we'll just keep it to the last 30 calendar days for first qualified. You can, here's your newsletter recommendations. You can incorporate that. We can also pull from our baskets. Let's select our all cryptocurrencies, which again is approximately 13,000 cryptocurrencies. I may not need to even designate the asset type, but we'll just go ahead and do that. And let's see if we get anything. So again, I'm looking for green zone cryptos that are trending up that have recently triggered an entry signal within the last 30 days. That may also qualify for our crypto strategies. And let's see what we get. So I'll hit run screener. And we got no results. So let's go ahead and kind of remove some of these. So given today's market, maybe we want to eliminate some. Let me get rid of entry signals and let's see if we get anything this way. You may want to start broad and narrow down. Ooh, we got one, guys. Okay. Um, not familiar with this one here, but we can continue to expand out. Let me remove the tradesmith strategies and go from here. See if we can get a few more bytes. All right. So we got <laughs> we got 24 results. Uh, so that was, again, what do we keep here? Cryptocurrencies that are in the green zone trending up. Uh, you may have additional specifications here, but you'll see it, it doesn't actually create the portfolio. It's really a screener to help you find cryptos based on what you're looking for. Now, let me show you this other feature here. We are going to find a lot that are in the red. Why don't we see if we can find some that are in the red zone that are trending up that also have recently triggered our early entry signal within the last 30 calendar days. Now, if you're not familiar with our early entry signal, it is an aggressive entry into a security that is currently in the red zone. It uses part of our health indicator formula. However, it only needs to detect a slight uptrend and so these are kind of think like a preemptive strike. Perhaps they may be triggering an entry signal soon. Not always the case, but it could be a positive sign. We can also designate based on VQ range. Again, your newsletters. We'll keep it broad open to all cryptocurrencies. And we'll hit run screener. Let's see if we get any cryptocurrencies that recently triggered our early entry signal. 
So we have three results right here. These are great tools that you can utilize uh, to research new potential cryptocurrencies. You can click on the ticker symbol and it takes you to the analyzer page where you can review the chart, the coin profile. So for example, I can click on this one for Anchor Protocol. And let's see what information we can find on the site. So we see it, it recently triggered um, We have an early entry signal on March 2nd. Did it also trigger a entry signal and then quickly stopped out? <laughs> what it looks I know, like. I like. Wait a second, what is that? Yeah, so look, oh. it it did it it did actually um, it triggered the early entry signal, and then the health indicator entry signal was triggered, but it was short lived, right? Extremely volatile right now, of course. Mm -hmm. With this, uh, with the Ukrainian-Russian war as well, things are very volatile, not just in the crypto markets, but the stock markets right now. There's a lot going on in today's uh, market. So it did stop out on March 6th, um, but you can come in here, review the different indicators, its risk. It's not too high for a crypto, about 30% there. It is in an uptrend right now. If you're not familiar with this coin, you can go to coin profile. And of course, there's no data to review. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go to one that I know we should have some information. You can type in the ticker symbol there at the top and uh, select, let me go USD. I think a lot of folks have heard about Dogecoin, the funny Dogecoin, the Shiba Inu, right? We can go to coin profile as soon as that loads. And you can read some information about Dogecoin. If you scroll down, we have some asset description information, some technical info. And my favorite are the resources that you can find below. So I really like that. Again, you know, we don't list the exchanges on the site. So we don't list here what exchange you can go to buy Dogecoin. And I think really we have to be careful about that because, you know, what if what if we say that, you know, you can buy Dogecoin on this this exchange and the exchange gets hacked and then that really doesn't look good for us, right? So we have to be careful about that. Uh, exchanges, you wanna be very careful, but you can definitely do your own research. So again, I like coin checkup. You can go to coincheckup.com. You can type in your, what was that one for anchor? Oh, um, Let me see if I can find it now. Anchor protocol right here. So protocol. there it is. Let's look. Let's look this up. I can type in the, the name of that crypto. I can go to the markets tab and I can see where we can where we can go to uh, buy this or trade it. So we can go, well, US members can't go to Binance, but we can go to Qcoin. Here's OKX exchange. And um, I like to, I would like to probably look for ones that have a high volume uh, gate IO, but you can see on the very far left are all of the exchanges. Yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Talking about exchanges, we did have a customer ask, um, are, is there like ex um, exchange fees, um, like cryptocurrency exchange fees? And, there is what I've come in contact with. I know there's could be wire fees, like from you know funds from your bank to your account, mining fees I've heard of, um, account fees, spot fees. I'm not really sure what that is, but I've heard that from other customers. And depending on how good you are in cryptos, there could be all sorts of different fees for, ex oh, um, yeah. for exchange fees. So yeah. Oh yes, absolutely. I know. Um, so let me go to let me take you to my Coinbase account. So I'm logged into Coinbase. And when I first started out, I had 
this was last year when I first started sometime last year, I had um, been adding gradually, like, like say, you know, a hundred bucks a month here and there. And I noticed the fees. Um, I was paying $10 for each <laughs> transaction. And yes, oh, wow, that's a lot. So then I decided, you know what, maybe instead of um, putting a hundred bucks every month, maybe I would save when I got to about 300, then I'd add it. <laughs> yeah, one, one transaction. <laughs> yeah, the transaction fees can be high. They can be. So, yeah, and I had, um, I was just adding to Bitcoin. You know, I was acting like it was kind of like my safe haven gold, although it hasn't really been acting like a safe haven gold because it's pretty <laughs> much been correlated to the stock market until recent events. But, um, you know, at the top of the, the market, I was able to, I collected about $1,600 in my little Bitcoin account or my Coinbase account. I was so excited. I was, that's great. And then it went into the red zone. So hopping back here, let's look at Bitcoin. And you know what I did, Kristen? Kept sold it. You know what I did? Nope, I didn't kept sell it. it. Ignored, I ignored our it. science test. <laughs> ignored, I, our, ignored the alert. <laughs> <laughs> I ignored the alert. You know what? <laughs> I was like uh, some of our members and I was like, I'm yeah. not gonna sell it. <laughs> Keep it. I'll hold on to it. It's gonna I'm come gonna, back. It's gonna come back. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna hold on to this sucker. Mm -hmm. And it just kept going down and down and down. Well, hopping back to make a long story short. Now I'm at where's my balance here? Um Should now be. I have a nine hundred and nine dollars. Yeah, so this is <laughs> so half. Yeah. So yeah, it, it got chunked in half. So yeah, pretty tough lesson there. But if you look here, it's I like the site. It's I think it's pretty user friendly. I can go to assets here. Oh, I gotta log back in. Let me show you. Yeah, and while you're logging in, I am gonna research um, and follow up with on this question, but. We did have a member, um, it, may, it may have changed and maybe they didn't have the life support during like COVID when it was really bad, when you know everybody switched, like not taking phone calls. But um, John mm -hmm. um, said that he was actually, he had um, some fraud, someone tried to hack into his account and he actually received um, live customer support from Coinbase and they actually followed up with an email and everything. Oh, and right. um, so we have, yeah. And then we have other customers saying, they have a similar situation. They can't get a hold of anybody. So I did ask John for some more information. So I am waiting for him to see if he has, still has a phone number or something. But he said he got live support. Okay, good. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. Maybe they're changing, um, changing that. Um, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that might be that might be the case. So here's my assets. All I have right now in U.S. dollar. Here's my balance. It's a small balance. But, um, you know, I'm not going to go crazy with it, but you can see here <laughs> the transactions here. Uh, I got up to 16, just over $1,600 on November 29th. And then, you know, it went into the red and I decided, you know what, I'm not going to listen to the health indicator. <laughs> <laughs> I, think works, I, guys, I think I know something. I think I know something. I'm going to ignore all the signals. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it is what it is, but uh, I learned a valuable lesson. If I would have gotten out, I would have had a nice profit and I could have been in cash waiting, still waiting, right? It's still in the red zone, but I could have been waiting and, um, you know, I wouldn't have lost so much money if I would have uh, listened to our, our alerts, but I, I didn't. So take my warning on that. But I can then come in here to assets. And um, so here's my assets right here, just in dollars right now. But if I want to trade, I can go on the here on the left, I can go to trade. And if I scroll down, you can see all of the cryptocurrencies that you can buy through Coinbase. There's quite a few, enough to get me going, 
right? There's plenty here. So I know it doesn't cover all the cryptocurrencies that are out there, but there's quite a few that I can choose from here. So I'm still considered a novice crypto investor. I think I know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> But Robert here, here I cut down on the chocolate strawberries and you can buy more BTC, uh, more Bitcoin. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stop the chocolate covered strawberries. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can do that. I don't think I so. I know, me either. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to have to keep with the chocolate covered strawberries, but <laughs> they're worth it. <laughs> yeah, they are worth it. So here on the, the left, I can, there's my little buy, sell, convert. For example, I can buy uh, Bitcoin or I can choose from any of these here that I showed you. So for example, if I wanna buy um, Bitcoin, I can pay with my US dollars that I've linked through my bank account and I could tell it how many you know, I wanna buy. Um, let me see if it tells me the, there's one time purchase. You can also uh, switch it. So if you want to know what that is in Bitcoin, you can toggle this. Um, let me preview buy. And let me see if it tells me the, the Coinbase fee is $299 um, for this transaction. So they take $299 off the top there. And if I want to do the transaction, I just hit buy. This is giving me a little information on the... In addition to the displayed Coinbase fee, we include a spread in the price. When using advanced trade, no spread is included because you are interacting directly with the order book. Cryptocurrency markets are volatile. This allows us to temporarily lock in price. If you want to learn more, learn more. I like Coinbase. I do provide a lot of educational material. I'm not going to buy right now. Um, I'm going to learn my lesson on that. Um, no buys right now of Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll hang tight. I'll be more patient now. But this is Coinbase. Um, I like it. Again, this is what I'm using. There's many different uh, wallets out there that you can choose from. Okay. I don't see any other questions. Well, actually, Joan, um, Let's see, are the fee amounts simply subtracted from the cost of the coin when you're purchasing or do some people have some lower cost coins that they use strictly for transaction costs? I believe that there are different coins that you can use to lower transaction costs. I don't know too much about that. Um, yeah, if there's anyone either, yeah. here that's a little bit more savvy that knows which coins you might want to use to purchase to lower those transaction costs let us know um, that might be something that we can add to our faqs mm -hmm. um, i just don't know enough about that to speak intelligently on that matter <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah, that's too funny. all right folks well i hope that today's lesson was um not just uh, entertaining, but also useful. There's a lot of good links in there uh, that you can review, follow back up with. Also, on the script, I've included crypto-related websites. So um, I have, these are websites that I've just collected over the years, some that you've, you've given me as well. Um, so I have websites for like research and analysis. Coin Checkup is one that we talked about. I know a lot of you folks like uh, Coin Gecko. Kristen, you like Coin Gecko. Yes. yes. Um, Brave New Coin. Again, we could go to Brave New Coin. So I'll just take you to the main website, bravenewcoin.com, and you can review all sorts of information on this website. I can go to data and charts. Here I can go to exchanges and, you know, select any exchange that I want to look at and Bancor Network. I get some information on what this exchange is all about. I'm not seeing anything there, um, but you get the idea. 
You can get some information about the exchange fees. Those fees are associated. Each platform may have different fees, of course. So you're very yes. welcome, Mitch. Yeah, you're welcome, Mitch. Mm -hmm. So with the wallets, um, again, there's different types of wallets that we talked about, the software wallets and the hardware wallets. Coinbase, what I was showing you is a software wallet. These are wallets that you can access online. So you have uh, internet access to them. The hardware wallets are more like the external devices that can be connected to your computer or um, I think even on uh, some with your cell phone. So just to pull back the slide again, we can go back to that slide where we talk about the different wallets. So we have the different software wallets. These are also known as your hot wallets. They're convenient um, and they're connected to the internet. So we have web wallets, Coinbase, Gemini, these are all web wallets. You have some desktop wallets and the mobile wallets, if you're using your cell phone or tablet, um, there's some, I, I covered mycelium as, as one of the main ones, but there's many different um, wallets out there. You really want to do some research online. I would go to their websites and review their website and see which ones give you that warm and fuzzy feeling, right? So <laughs> I know <laughs> what's important to me is educational content. And that's one of the things that attracted me to Coinbase because there's many different educational resources um, that I can. I can find with Coinbase. So I like the educational material. If you're more um, conscious, yeah, exactly. If you're more conscious about security, you can go the hardware route. Um, you just definitely want to be careful because, you know, this is, you got to be careful with your cryptos and, and not forget your passwords. <laughs> You can you could potentially lose all your coins, and that's very sad. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's a very scary um, thought right there. But you start by setting up a digital wallet. So just like you have your bank account, right? Um, your digital assets have to sit in some sort of an account, a wallet. In this case, and there's many different wallets that you can set up. Think of the exchange like the grocery store, okay? So I have to go to a grocery store to buy my groceries. Um, well, I know you can buy online, but just bear with me, folks. I'm trying to come up with an analogy. <laughs> That's here. what I'm thinking. I'm like, I do grocery pickup. <laughs> I know what you're already thinking, but I can buy on Amazon.com. <laughs> well, yes, but just bear with me. Before online shopping, there's many different grocery stores, right? Just like there's many different exchanges. For example, I can buy, um, you know, my favorite chocolate covered strawberries at Sprouts, but I can't find them at Kroger or another grocery store, right? So <laughs> think of the food as the coins. Um, so there's different exchanges where you can go to the market to exchange and buy uh, or trade your cryptocurrencies. The first thing you want to start and set up is your wallet. So you want to take some time to research the different wallets out there and what is going to be best for you. Then you can, um, you know, transfer your U.S. dollars to the wallet. You can buy Bitcoin. You can buy other coins um, to purchase the coins on the exchange. You can. Some of them you can purchase with U.S. dollars, but some of them you can only purchase with Bitcoin or other or other coins. So, you know, it takes some time. Um, you want to start slowly and um, don't go crazy with it. Just start very simply. Start with a few cryptos and, um, you yeah, know, don't invest your sure. Don't invest your whole life savings. <laughs> yeah, please don't <laughs> please. do that. <laughs> please don't. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get going. Keith, if you have any additional questions regarding wallets, you can email us.
you can put it to attention to uh, Marina and then uh, we can follow back up with you, okay? So just let us know what specific questions you have regarding wallets and we'll follow back up with you. Alrighty, folks. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Kristen, thank you so much as always. Oh, yeah, of course. We will Bye. see you all on Thursday. Thursday. Bye. Bye. <laughs>